Ooh. Hello there, how are you? Today I'm trying out a whole bunch of new makeup. I have a new primer, a new blush, a new mascara, a new lip plumper, a new lipstick, and some other stuff. It's going to be a real soft, easy, pretty look and I'm excited to jump in. You guys see this coffee cup all the time. This is actually from the lodge at Whitefish Lake. And Whitefish was a little town in Montana that I lived in for about a year. I went there to hike. It's really near Glacier National Park, which is spectacular. Probably my favorite national park. So I have an emotional attachment to this mug. That's why you always see me use it. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman. I hope you enjoy this video today. If you do, go ahead and click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and be sure to hit the thumbs up before you leave. If you're interested in more makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman, stop by prettyover50.com. There's a lot more great information just waiting for you there. I've got a bunch of new products today, and as always, everything that I use and mention today will be listed and linked below, and it'll also be over on the blog, so super easy for you to find. And with that, let's hop into the makeup. I'm using a new lip plumper today while I do my makeup. I always like to put something on my lips while I'm doing my makeup so that they're a little bit more full, moisturized, and plumped out by the time I get done. This is from Too Faced and it's called their Lip Injection Extreme. This is a little sample size. I've been using this the last couple of days. It has an interesting texture. It's almost like a clear lip gloss, but it feels like it has lanolin in it or something. There's a, a slip to it that I don't often feel in other lip glosses like this one. The ones I've really been using lately and enjoying are the City Lips by City Beauty. That really does a great job of plumping my lips and also the Buxom, that does too. I'm not too sure about the lip plumping ability of this formula. We'll watch during the video to see if I have fluffier lips at the end. The primer I'm gonna be using today is by Pixi and it's their Flawless Beauty Primer. And what they say about this is it's a hydrating, glowy primer. So first time using this, haven't even tested it. This looks a lot like the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion. It has that kind of shimmery, look to it right here. So I'm going to go pretty soft on this because I don't know if I want to be quite that dewy. It's very smooth. It seems to sink in pretty quickly and you can see it's already putting a little bit of glow on my skin. If you have dry skin this is a nice way to get a bit of a glowy look. If you have oily skin, this is not what you would want to be looking for because it would just make you look even glowier by the end of the day. I'm going to do a little bit of color correcting with my Stila Correct and Perfect. So I'm going to go into the green right here and kind of hit some areas that are just a little red on my skin. This will sort of help to cancel that out. You can see how that just sort of neutralizes that redness in my cheeks. Then I'm going to go for a little bit of the peach, and that's going to go right in those purple circles underneath my eyes. Just a really light application, and you'll be able to see right away how that really knocks down that purple look. I like to put the color corrector on early because then it has a chance to soak into my skin, not sit on top of it when I put my concealer on. I'm gonna do my brows with the Wet n Wild Retractable Brow Pencil. This is in the color Ash Brown. I love this product. It's so affordable and so good. <laughs> of all the brow products that I have found, this truly is one of my favorites. For eyeshadow primer, I'm gonna be using the Milani. Just a little bit on my finger, tap it in between two fingers, and that goes all over the lid. The eyeshadow palette I'm using today is from Sigma, and I've talked about this quite a bit on my channel, but I've never demonstrated it. I love this palette. It's called their Essentials Palette, and I can tell you, it's become an essential palette for me. It stays on my makeup table all the time. You can see it's a beautiful neutral palette with some nice pops of color. We have the smaller nine pans here and then three larger pans here, and you could use this palette for kind of an overall face palette, using the highlighter and a bronzer down here. I'm not gonna do that today. What I'm gonna be doing is really highlighting a couple of the colors in this palette that I've been using quite a bit. You can see there's a berry here, a plum here, a nice dark, almost black, deep chocolate brown, which is so nice, a more mauve mid-tone transition color here, just a beautiful selection. 
The color that I'm going to use on my lids today is called Nutmeg, and it is such an interesting pink color. It's a dusty, beautiful, soft pink. I've been wearing this a lot when I'm having a very casual day or if I'm just going hiking with some other people and I just want a light sheer color on my lids to kind of cover up any discoloration. It is so beautiful and so subtle yet really creates a kind of soft look on the eyes. That's what I'm going to be using all over my lids today. I'm going to take my BK Beauty 201 brush, just get a nice application and that's going to go all over the lid from the transition area down into the movable lid. This color is so beautiful and you can wear it as a real sheer application for a very subtle look or build it up a little bit to have a little bit more emphasis on the tone. The Sigma formula was such a surprise for me. You know, I had heard a lot about their brushes, of course, all of us have, but I really wasn't familiar with their eyeshadows, and I'm finding this formula to be one of my absolute favorites. Smooth, hardly any fallout, blendable, oh, just really lovely to work with. My experience is that these shadows almost blend themselves. I have that soft pink worked over both lids from the crease down onto the movable lid. Now I'm going to take a flat brush and dip it into this color snow. This is just such a pigmented white color that really lightens up any shadowy areas around my eyes. Where I've been using it is the inside corner to brighten up that area. So I'll take just a little bit on my brush and just start really working it into that inside corner of my eye and smoothing it in a little bit onto that inside corner of my eye. And you can see the difference between this eye and this eye. It just brightens up that shadow area and really opens up the inside corner of that eye. And I really like that look a lot. I think it just makes me look more awake and my face look a little bit fresher. I'm gonna take that same brush and that same color snow and then just run a little bit of that right underneath my brows just to highlight that brow area. And look at what a difference between the two eyes. This without the color snow, this with the color snow. It just really opens up that area and lifts the eyebrow. I think it's just so pretty. Same thing on the other eye. For foundation today, I'm gonna to be using the Kogan Doe. I have used this a few times, and of course this is a higher end luxury foundation. It really is beautiful and looks glorious on the skin. This color is 012. I ordered it online and it's a little bit too light for me, but I think with this softer look today, it's going to be fine. And I'm pretty light right now because it is the middle of winter. So I'm just going to start out with a little bit on the back of my hand and just start placing that around my face. And you can see it's a lot lighter than I am right now. I'm curious to see how it's going to look underneath this glowy primer. My BK Beauty 101 brush. I'm just going to start pressing that into the skin. I'm going to take a little bit more to hit some of the areas with a little bit more coverage. Now I'm going to take my damp beauty sponge and just press that foundation into the skin. I can see that glowy primer really showing through the foundation. It's a pretty look. For concealer, I'm going to be using a brand new concealer. This is the Milani Conceal and Perfect. It says Longwear Concealer. I went ahead and got it in the color Nude Ivory. I like to have a little bit of brightness underneath my eyes with my concealer, so a brighter color seems to work for me. I haven't used this, and I haven't really even heard that much about it. It's a beautiful package. Milani really does a nice job of their packaging. Standard doe foot applicator. Let's go ahead and see what the color looks like right here. This again is nude ivory and I'm just going to dot a little bit right underneath each eye. And I'm going to take my Real Techniques brush and start pressing that in and as it shears out I'll move that towards the outside corner of my eye. This feels like a medium weight concealer. It's not real serum and it's not real thick and seems to have fairly decent coverage. I think that's a good color for me. It's blending out nice underneath my eyes. I would say it's not real hydrating. Even still, I'm gonna set it because it just seems to work better when I set my under eye concealer. 
Now I'm going to take a little bit of setting spray just on the tip of my sponge and I'm going to press that concealer in. Then I'm going to set it real gently with my number no. 7 Lift and Illuminate Powder. This is a Sigma brush. I like it because it's just real fluffy and soft. And I'm just going to press that powder in really gently. For bronzer, I'm going to use my L'Oreal Lumi Bronze. I want to use this because it's a very soft, subtle color. And I really want to warm up my face because this foundation is a little bit light for me. So I'm just going to take my e.l.f. tapered powder brush, get a little bit of product on that, and just start warming up my face. I love this bronzer so much because it doesn't have any warmth to it. It's just a nice, neutral, almost cool tone. Just so very pretty. And it can be very, very subtle, which I appreciate. I'm really excited about the blush today. This is from Revlon and it's the Ravishing Rose. This is the same line that the Apricute blush that I love so much is in and I wanted to try some of the other colors. This is Ravishing Rose. I thought it was just so very pretty. See it right here. I'll put it right next to that concealer. Isn't that just the prettiest little pink blush? I really like this blush formula from Revlon. It's just soft and just really melts into the skin in a nice way. I'm going to get a little bit of that on my blush brush and just start tapping that in. It's just a real soft, subtle pink. I'm going to take a big fluffy brush and just blend that in. Look at that. Isn't that just nice? Isn't that pretty? Just the slightest bit of glow and really, really subtle and soft. Loving this one. For a highlighter, I'm going to be using a Daniel Sander. This is one of their watercolor highlights. This is from the Liquid Cheek Color Line. I really do love these. They're a lot of fun to play with, and the formula is just so very unique. Here's what the highlight looks like right here. Isn't that pretty? It's just soft and very subtly glowy. Just really, really a unique formulation. Just going to put a little bit on two fingers and tap it right over the top of that blush area. And I always like to put a little bit down into the front of my cheeks. This is sort of almost a beigey gold tone. I think it's a pretty color layered over that pink blush. Truly, what did we do before highlighter? It's just so much fun. I feel like highlight just wakes up the whole makeup look. For setting powder, I'm going to be using the e.l.f. Halo Glow Loose Powder. This is a fun little powder at a very, very affordable price. This could be said to be similar to the Milani Prep Set and Glow, which you guys know I love. I like this powder. I don't think I love it as much as the Milani Prep Set and Glow, but this is easier to find. So I'm going to take just a little bit on a big fluffy brush. This is my BK Beauty 103 brush. Just get a little bit, tap it off, and then I'm just going to dust that over the face. And I'm going to use a little of my Morphe setting spray. I'm going to use my lay liner to line my lids and do the upper water line and then curl my lashes and I'll be right back. For mascara today, I'm going to be using the Clinique High Impact Mascara. I got this in a little kit from Clinique. Clearly, it's the smaller sample size or travel size. I haven't used this at all. Of course, nice packaging with Clinique. And it has just a standard mascara wand. It's not that figure eight shape, and it's not a rubberized wand. It's just the regular ones with the bristles on it. So let's go ahead and see how this goes on. I can say that it's lengthening my lashes quite a bit and really not a lot of clumping which is nice to see. So here's one coat of the mascara. I can say that it's going on really smoothly and the lashes even though they're lengthened still look a little fluttery. They're not real thick and clumpy which I'm liking. Okay so here's two coats of the mascara. I think the lashes look really, really pretty. They're a little bit volumized, not a whole bunch, but I think that that helps to make the lashes look a little bit softer and a little bit more natural. For lips today, I'm going to be using a combination of a Rimmel Lip Liner. This is their lasting finish lip liner. This is the color Red Dynamite. This lipstick is from Ilamasca. This is Starshine, and I just thought that was the prettiest red. You can see the color combination here, the lip liner and the lipstick. So here we have it all put together. 
Gosh, this was fun for me today. I really, really liked so many of these products. The Pixie Primer is nice. I think it's very similar to the Lumi Glotion. So if you have that, you probably aren't going to need to pick this one up. But it is a good product. It's nice on the skin. It's not very hydrating, but it definitely has a glowy finish. The Kogan Doe Foundation, of course, this is just a beautiful foundation. Higher end luxury price, but really does put a pretty look on the skin. I think with the glowy primer underneath it, it really does give a nice finish. Probably my favorite from today is this Essentials Palette from Sigma. I love the Sigma formula. This palette really is an essential palette for me. It stays on my makeup table all the time. If you're a neutral eyeshadow loving person, this is really a beautiful choice. The formula is delicious. They almost blend themselves. These two colors that I used today, Snow and Nutmeg, are so unique and so different. I don't have anything else in my collection like them. The way that snow brightens up the inner corner of my eye, it is such a nice finishing touch when I want a real open, bright eyed look for the day. And I think this color nutmeg is so subtle and so soft. I use it all the time when I'm just looking for an everyday look. Definitely the Sigma eyeshadow formula is one of my favorites. This palette truly is an essential for me. These little Revlon blushes are a true gem. Drugstore pricing, they come in a lot of colors. Apricute is beautiful. It's more of a course, a peachy look. This pink look in the Ravishing Rose I think is just lovely. The formula is very, very soft. It almost melts into the skin and just gives a subtle blush of color, which I really appreciate. So love this line of blushes from Revlon. The Milani Conceal and Perfect Concealer, I don't know you guys. You know, it looks okay underneath my eyes. It definitely didn't do anything that other concealers in my collection do. It looks actually a little bit dry underneath my eyes. I wish it was more hydrating. I still have not found a concealer that I can say is, oh my gosh, this makes such a difference in my under eyes. This one definitely doesn't. If you have oilier under eyes, this might be a good choice for you. Other than that, for me, this is kind of a okay concealer. The Ila Masca lipstick. I love this line of lipsticks. Of course, this is more expensive. It's a luxury line. But this lipstick itself is so creamy and the colors are spot on. I have two lipsticks from this line so far and both of them are my favorite for the color that they are. Definitely loving this Starshine lipstick from Ilamasca. I was really kind of surprised at this Clinique High Impact Mascara. I think my eyelashes look great. I really appreciate the fact that the formula was very lengthening but it wasn't clumpy. My lashes do have a little bit of volume to them, not like some other mascaras, but I think that they look really good. I do like it when I can get a lot of length out of a mascara without having them all clump up and make it look like I have four or five lashes. This formula definitely didn't do that. I think my eyelashes still look soft and a little bit fluttery, but they're really, really lengthened. So I'll have to say I'm a fan of the Clinique High Impact Mascara. I had a lot of fun putting together this look today. I hope you enjoyed it too. If you found it useful, helpful, and fun, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you're interested in more makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman, stop by prettyover50.com. There's a lot more great information just waiting for you there. You guys know it just tickles me when you take a few minutes out of your day to spend it with me. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. Again, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman. Make it a great day. Wear your sunscreen and all. See you in the next video. Bye now.